So it is October 11th and I'm down here at the Croton Landing. I mentioned to someone that I would come down here to look at the spider lantern fly. And one thing that is amazing is the amount of Tree of Heavens that are all up and down the drive. So I'm gonna show you what a Tree of Heaven looks like and how you can identify it. This is the kind of preferred food source for spotted lantern flies. And I believe, but I'm not sure, that the baby spotted lantern flies, AKA the nymphs, actually need the Tree of Heaven to complete one of their kind of um, growth cycles. Okay, so it looks like we're coming up on a patch of Tree of Heavens, right kind of down here. Um, the reason why Tree of Heavens, you'll find them anywhere, is that they can pretty much grow anywhere. Actually, there's a famous book called a Tree Grows in Brooklyn, and that tree is a Tree of Heaven. So let's go check these out, and let's go look and see why their leaves, you can kind of really tell by their leaves. Okay. Let's come in here, we got some going in here. Ah, uh, yes, okay, so here we go. Right here is a tree of heaven. And you're like, hmm, I wonder why that is. You look at the leaves right here. It, it, it looks like um, kind of like a skinny palm tree and the leaves have like an eye, like a kind of like a little, I guess they call it an eye or a little thing that sticks out at the bottom. I'm gonna try to grab a leaf. So I can grab a leaf. Oh, this entire thing is a leaf. So this entire branch, it looks like it has many, many leaves. No, this entire thing is actually one leaf. Um, so let me go grab it. Oh. Okay, we got it. So, oh yeah, okay. So it has, if you smell this, Oh, so it has a smell. It's like peanut butter, but it's rotten. Um, that's what they smell like. And that's how you can definitely tell it's a tree of heaven. So again, we're going to take a look and see all of them growing here along this walkway. On so here we have a baby tree of heaven. So I'm kind of down here by the landing. Um, I'm a little bit past the marina. Um, these just love to grow and they actually send out toxins to kill other plants around them. So we got one here. There's uh, more back there. And uh, we can pretty much grow anywhere. So again, this is a whole big patch here. There's some right here. Created the situation where you, if you've got a couple that maybe hop a ride in someone's car or on someone's boat, they've got the perfect food source to then make the transition to an adult stage. So really the tree of heaven, think of it as it's something that the spotted lanternfly really needs to complete its life cycle. People may wonder, well, why is the tree of heaven here? Like it's a plant originally from Asia. It's, I'll put a link down below, but originally it was brought to New York City, uh, I believe in the 1800s, because it could grow anywhere. And it was considered to be a really hardy plant. And in Brooklyn, if you have a really kind of small, like that size plot of dirt, you can get a nice big tree of heaven there, like something that's 80 feet tall. So you can see why it was desirable, but it soon became out of control. And then they realized, hey, we shouldn't plant any more of these. But by then, it was already too late. What I hear now is that there are tree heavens growing out of sewer grates, and it's, it's a problem. So it's something that they need to figure out. All right, let's start looking for spotted lantern fly. Oh, look at this. Okay, here we go. We got, what do we got here? Oh yeah, there's a bunch that have been, that one's been smashed. Got that one. Okay, um, so there looks to be a lot on this tree here. And look at this. I wonder if that's been smashed. This one's still alive. Gotcha. Okay, 
Um, oh my god, there's like a bunch here, like, like a mating. It's disgusting. It'd be good to find out from an arborist like what kind of tree this is. It does look like a sugar maple based upon the bark. If you notice, this is not the same bark as the Norway maple. Oh look, here's another one. Yes, ugh. Okay, so they're all up here. Oh God, look at them. Yeah, what they're doing is they're feeding and then they're gonna lay eggs on it. So whatever kind of tree this is, again, I'm gonna ask an arborist to really look at these leaves and tell me what kind of tree this is. This should probably be um, treated on a regular basis if there's more up here. Oh my God, look at it. Oh my God. So I would hope that this is considered to be something of critical importance for New York State since New York State also has many apple orchards, um, especially as you go north of Westchester County, and that that is an important part of the agricultural economy. Oh, we just found a bunch. Hold up. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh my God. Oh, God. Oh, this is disgusting. Look at this. There's obviously been some severe damage. Oh, my God. This is disgusting. They're all inside this tree here in this tree. Look at this, they're all feeding here because they basically have been able to penetrate the tree. And so yeah, this is a big feeding zone. They're gonna be here, oh, this is so disgusting. And they're gonna feed here, and then they're gonna lay eggs here. This will just try to smash a bunch. Oh my God, it's so gross. Ugh. Oh. oh, gross. Oh, this is disgusting. This tree definitely needs to be treated. This is a tree that is severely damaged. Look at this. Um, it should either be, I mean, let me go back to you. It goes all the way up the top, this damage, and they're all really nestled in here and feeding on the tree here. So this needs to be. This is what we sometimes call a host tree, meaning it's hosting, you know, hundreds if not thousands of them, and this is where they plan to lay eggs. But as, as you can see right here, this is soft. This wood, I can almost like dig my nail into it. So it's very easy for them to feed on the sap here. All right, so now you've seen uh, what the situation is here down the landing. Oh God, there's a big wood in my hair. Oh, oh. Um, you've seen what the situation is. There's not in my hair. Um, this is just kind of the, what, what they call like the beginning of the invasion. Next year, it'll be 10 times worse because they're all gonna lay eggs and each spot of lantern fly can lay between 30 and 50 eggs. So just imagine you have 30 or 300 or even a thousand. Next year, we're gonna have 30,000. So, and then it just continues to increase. So again, wipe out the food supply, get rid of that tree of heaven. Again, it's great that our mayor is very involved in New York state politics, and I'm hoping that this issue can get fast-tracked. Uh, and then I think it's also just up to us as citizens and residents, we need to bring awareness to this. And people should be locating and identifying trees where they see spotted lanternfly infestations. That's called a host tree. and. Uh, you know, call, call an arborist, you know, and say, what, what is the best way to treat this? It's a beautiful day. Weather's perfect. If you want to come down to Croton Landing, um, definitely still enjoyable. In the next couple of years, I don't know what it's going to be like. There could be spotted lanternflies like everywhere. And like when I was in Rye at the beach over the summer, they would like jump on you, on your face, get in your hair. So this may be like the last time to really enjoy our landing. So get out here, enjoy it, enjoy it while you can. Please be an advocate for our environment and our ecosystem. Um, yes, climate change is real, but we also need to think about our beautiful Hudson River, beautiful ecosystem here. Uh, it's precious. We need to take care of our trees. We need to understand that each tree can produce enough oxygen for 10 people. 
So this is something that's critical. I think that, you know, it's a really great advantage that our mayor is the chief of staff of Parkham, and maybe he can expedite this, you know, kind of like up the chain of command, and we can actually kind of get, get something done. Um, because this is just the beginning. Once, once we kind of get to next year, it's going to be really bad. And that's what happened in Pennsylvania. So, um, and then you're going to have three years of these things everywhere. Like just, mm. um, so this is the time now to really get involved and to say, okay, we're going to really nip this in the bud.